Let's talk about colon cancer, the third most common cancer in the world after uh, breast cancer and uh, prostate cancer for men as well as lung cancer. It's also the third most common cause of death from cancer. So colon cancer is a big deal both for men and women. And the major risk factors include uh, age. Anybody over 50 should be getting screened. Uh, high fat intake in the diet. Um, a, a diet low in uh, fiber. Um, if you have polyps in your colon, polyps progress to colon cancer, even benign polyps. And inflammatory bowel diseases like ulcerative colitis and uh, Crohn's disease cause chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation anywhere can end up leading to cancer. Uh, a family history, especially familial polyposis, colon cancer, um, and and Lynch syndromes. Uh, FBC would be the the extreme version. Uh, usually, you can almost guarantee a colon cancer by the age of thirty or forty. So. These people are going to walk into a primary care office or sometimes an emergency room with uh, an acute change in bowel habits sometimes. Uh, that can also be kind of a chronic change uh, with, with bowel obstruction due to a colon cancer. You can get uh, some serious abdominal pain uh, or with, with a less acute obstruction you can get just abdominal discomfort over time weight loss uh, can result from malabsorption and also just for general uh, GI discomfort which may uh, cause anorexia anemia will will show up any any anemic uh, person over the age of, of 50 should certainly be getting uh, colonoscopy to, to check for some kind of colon cancer uh, and then blood in the stool and blood in the stool will present kind of on a gradient uh, if it's if the bleed is um, in the right colon or the proximal colon it's going to come out kind of brown at, after it uh, passes through the anus um, in the transverse colon, you get kind of a kind of a reddish brown, and then uh, that bright red blood would be an indication of uh, bleeding in the rectum or the or the uh, left uh, descending colon. So, um, any anybody with bleeding from the rectum, you've got to rule out uh, some kind of a colon cancer. When you do an exam, uh, of course you want to inspect the abdomen. You know, you, you want to rule out causes of their discomfort due to prior surgery. So you look for, so for any kind of uh, an incision site. Also check for Virchow's node. Uh, you listen, and generally the, the um, loss of bowel sounds is, is not going to be seen in the a chronic condition, but but if you've got an acute abdomen, you you may hear some uh, lack of bowel sounds. You you want to percuss to you know uh, figure out the size of the the um, liver as well as just to to hear f for fluid in the abdomen and and palpate see if you can feel any masses. On the rectal exam, first inspect the, the anal area. Sometimes you can have uh, lesions coming out of the anus that you can actually see. You'll, you, uh, on a digital rectal exam, you, s you will feel, um, you, you may be able to feel a lesion if it's close enough to the, to the 
uh, anus. And then as you pull your finger out, you do a fecal occult blood test. If it's a male, you also want to um, do a prostate exam while you're in there. And then uh, if you have it available, you can do anoscopy and just, just take a look in, in the rectum. So uh, laboratory tests are, are useful. Um, they, they may uh, help you to, to see per perhaps an anemia that might give you an indication that you want to get uh, some more imaging done. But also just for pre-op, if you, if you want to make sure that somebody is uh, available for, or not available, but a candidate for operation, uh, assuming that you've already gotten um, assuming that you've already gotten imaging that shows that you have uh, something that needs to be resected, then uh, a CBC uh, chemistry pro profile, you want to make sure that they're not going to uh, bleed too much, so you check the PT, PT PTT, do a urinalysis just to make sure that they don't have any kind of a, an infection. Um, and liver enzymes may or may not be helpful. Um, they're not going to be as sensitive as, as actually imaging the, the liver to see if we have metastasis. After you do an operation, one of the best indicators uh, of recurrence is going to be the, your carcinoembryonic uh, antigen. The CEA is is not as not sensitive for screening, um, but it is uh, um, it's going to be present in at an elevated level. Will be present in around eighty five percent of those with uh, recurrence. So uh, it it will give you a good indication that you need to get a CT scan and check for recurrence. Um, so colonoscopy is the gold standard in imaging the colon to, to look for lesions. It is uh, the, m the major screening test, and it also is helpful because on colonoscopy you can also do a resection uh, of polyps and, and help prevent uh, benign polyps from progressing into, into malignant ones. And uh, of course, you can take biopsies when you do colonoscopy too. The CT scan is is helpful uh, for staging uh, of a known um, cancer. Helps you to to identify metastases. The chest X-ray is good, especially if it's a rectal cancer. You can rule out. Uh, metastasis to the lungs um, and it also may be used in a preoperative situation just to to uh, rule out serious cardiopulmonary problems that may interfere with anesthesia some sigmoidoscopy is is not uh, as sensitive and as an eg of an exam um, but it's also a lot less uh, expensive and in and it's somewhat less invasive as well you don't have to get anesthesia for sigmo sigmoidoscopy so it could be done in a for example a primary care office or or a GI doctor's office and uh, so those benefits may uh, they may make it easier for people to get screening done uh, even though it's not a complete screening it's uh, it's better than nothing. So if if for whatever reason it's not easy to get somebody to get in to get screened, a sigmoidoscopy may help that situation. In a similar way, virtual colonoscopy may be used in uh, in patients who are not uh, candidates for colonoscopy. You know, if they can't tolerate anesthesia or if there is a high risk for uh, perforation or bleeding. And then the virtual colonoscopy is, is actually a, a sensitive exam that's being 
still being developed, but it's been used for a few years now. And uh, so, so patients that can't get a colonoscopy, a, a virtual colonoscopy might be a good idea, but it's currently not reimbursed as a screening modality. Um, an endorectal ultrasound is, is also helpful for seeing an invasion uh, of, of cancer. You can use it to help determine the depth of, of some of the cancers that, that you may see on a colonoscopy. So there's, there's some major differences between the colon versus the rectal cancer, and, and so that's one of the most important questions to ask or to find an answer to when, when uh, diagnosing a colorectal cancer. One of the reasons is because colon cancer will metastasize to the liver predominantly as it goes uh, through the portal cable system, and, and the liver is the first capillary bed that it will meet. Whereas r the rectum is um, is drained both by the portal cable system, um, as well as uh, just the uh, inferior rectal veins, which will uh, first go um, to the inferior vena cava and into the heart and lungs. So that the lungs is one of the uh, major places of metastasis for the re rectal cancers. It also is going to affect resection just because it's easier to get into the colon and, and get a margin on either side, whereas the rectal cancers, you, you may not get a five centimeter margin like you can get easily in the colon. And so uh, you may end up um, having to do a more extensive surgery in order to get the margins you need. 